Hi guys, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name is Megan and today I wanted to kind of do a better version of some of the laws regarding a service dog. Last video I did, don't go watch, I was all over the place. I kept jumping from different topics like some would be rules when it comes to a business, some would be about an airport and I kind of wanted to take that video, kind of squish it down a little bit. So today's video is going to be service dog laws when it comes to businesses and this means any public area that you may go, McDonald's or clothing store, stuff like that or even like theaters, sports areas. I also want to say all of my info that I've gathered is from the ADA website. I'm going to link it down below if you want to go check it out, um, specifically where I got all these facts for you. So if you want to see that, look down below. Well, if you guys have any more questions that you want me to answer, just leave them down below and I will definitely answer them in like a follow-up video. Let's just get started though. <laughs> First off, we're going to start with what is a service dog. And this one I am going to read off from what the ADA defines a service animal. And by the way, in this video, I know I have a service dog, but I'm going to say animal because you can have a dog or a miniature horse in some places. These are just laws that cover service animals, not just dogs. ADA defines any guide, signal, animal, or animal trained to provide assistance to a person with disability. You can't have a train, a task trained dog with a person without a disability, and you can't have a person with a disability without a task trained dog. That is the dumbed down version. Just to make it clear, you have to have both. So basically what the tasks, tasks are, are the functions that the person with the disability can't perform. Stuff like alerting to a hearing impairment. Um, this goes with like fire alarms and stuff. Some people that are hearing impaired can't hear a fire alarm. Or for people who have mobile disabilities, they can pick up things, they can carry things, they can even pull wheelchairs, stuff like that. And then we obviously know a guide dog as well. This does cover psychiatrics. They are covered under the ADA law. I know a lot of people think of them as emotional support, but they are not. Psychiatric are still task trained dogs whereas emotional support are not. I also have a video on emotional support animals. So if you wanna check that out, I will try to link it below or I'll have it in the icon, but I did a whole video on emotional support animals. The biggest thing to know is that a service dog is not a pet. They do not go under pet rules for any situation. When a business asks what covers your service dog, you can tell them the American Disabilities Act or the ADA goes to any business that allows the public in. So if anybody can walk in that store and go do it, your service dog is allowed to be there. With that being said, your service animal cannot cause problems, meaning they cannot be a distraction, they cannot be in the way of the business performing day-to-day -day activities, if that makes sense. I feel like I said that the weirdest way possible. Um, I recommend if you are trying to train your dog to be in public areas, go to pet friendly stores at first and just have the dog. That's what I did with my dog the minute I got her. I just had her going in pet friendly places, seeing people, but also still training her. With this, it covers areas that customers can go. You can't take your you and your service dog anywhere where only employees are allowed. I feel like that's self-explanatory but I wanted to add that just in case you did not know but the biggest thing to say is that the ADA requires to allow a person with a disability a person with a disability have their service dog with them. so how to tell if a service animal is actually a service animal rather than a pet there are a lot of times where a lot of people especially me we have our dogs wear vests or collars that say service dog just because it's a lot easier those less questions asked this isn't required you do not have to have any identification like this well identification you are allowed to ask the person if it is a service dog. Um, you just can't ask what their disability is and they do not have to prove what their disability is. A lot of times having a psychiatric service dog for myself, people try to ask what my specific disability is because it's not always physical. You can't always see it as if someone was like in a wheelchair. You could tell like, oh, I'm not attacking you in a wheelchair, just trying to show the difference. Uh, with this, I know there are some dogs that do get certified through a program and you can show that if you want. You are not required by any means because with this, not every service animal is a certified service dog because it's not required some of them are self-taught like mine is self-trained by me and they're not required to be certified so that's why a business can't insist any kind of proof of identification so the biggest question a lot of businesses ask me is what do i do when a service dog comes into the store one act like it's not there i know hardest thing to do because it's a dog and everybody loves dogs i know but this dog is for a medical reason or else it wouldn't be there if you're a business owner and as long as you don't see the dog misbehaving, just don't worry about it. The owner should be in a place that the dog is trained enough to be in the public location. The biggest thing when I can't put them in their own spot, you can't say that they have to be over here or whatever. You also don't have to make accommodations 
the person with the service animal should be able to make those arrangements themselves and figure things out. They're allowed to be wherever everybody else is and they should care for their own dog. If I see a no pet sign, what does that mean? Service dogs are not pet. Your service dog is allowed to go in places where there are no pet signs because like I said, they don't fall under that category. This does not mean if you're a business owner, go away from your policy. You still wanna stay with your policy of no pets because that does protect the service animals that are in there. They won't get attacked. I know it is hard sometimes because people are lying. I get it, I've been there, I've had fake service dog attack mine before. So the next thing that I've seen is that some businesses only allow guide dogs or mobility dogs and this is actually a violation against the ADA because the ADA covers all service animals. A business is not allowed to say because it's a guide dog or because it's not a guide dog that it can't be here. You cannot pick which service animal you allow in. They are all covered to go into a public area with their service animals. So the other thing is can a business charge a fee for cleaning? So for specific cleaning, this goes a lot for hotels. You cannot charge an extra fee for a service animal. Also with this, if there's any charges that goes with having a pet, service animals do not apply to this because they are not a pet. The only thing that a hotel can charge is if the animal does cause damage as if any other person without a disability would have or without a disability that has a service animal that doesn't have a service animal some of my friends don't have service animals right if they break a chair and my my service dog breaks a chair they have to be charged the same you can't extra charge me just because i have a dog and they don't so is a business responsible for my service animal no you're responsible for your service animal alone i think i said this before but the business is not required to give you accommodations for your service animal to do anything. They are just required to allow you in and that's it. So what happens if the service animal barks, growls, or acts out of control in my business? So if you're a business owner, if you see a service animal behaving out of control, you are allowed to kick them out at that point. If they're causing any kind of disruption or possible health risks to your customers, you are allowed to kick out the dog and the owner. <laughs> They go hand in hand, but you can't make assumptions. You can't assume because you had a bad past with a German Shepherd, for example, a lot of people do, it's unfortunate, or a pit bull is another example. You can't just assume that they're gonna be bad and kick them out. They have to actually misbehave and act out of control before you can kick them out of your business. Otherwise, you're violating the ADA and the owner can take actions as needed. So that is all I have for you guys today. Again, I'm going to make a part two related to just the airport. I'm gonna have to come up with questions, but if you have any questions when it comes to an airport, leave them down below for that video. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, if you have any questions, leave them down below. I can make another part for this. I know business laws with service animals are weird. Some of the businesses don't get it. I get it. I have a service dog. <laughs> I get it. Um, but if you guys enjoyed, please give it a thumbs up. It would mean so much to me. And if you want to subscribe, that would also mean a lot to me. We also hit 300 subscribers, which is freaking cool. I will see you guys next time. Bye.